Hi, my name is Dr. Sean Patrick. I'm from the School of Health Systems and Public Health. And for the next couple of minutes, we'll be looking at research questions. For the duration of this module, you have been looking at public health. And now we're going to look at some of the research questions that you potentially have, some of the work that you would like to do. We will look at how you can formulate some of these questions and what you need to think about. For the next few slides, we will have a look at different types of research questions. We will look at the infectious disease malaria as a topic. We will have a look at the different types of questions you can ask. We will look at descriptive questions. We will look at analytical questions. We will look at managerial questions. And then we will end with a summary. If we take a closer look at the World Malaria Report in 2019, we see that from 2010 up until 2018, there's been a decrease in the number of cases worldwide from about 251 million to a close to approximately 230 million cases. So there has been a reduction in these from 2010 to 2018. Furthermore, between 2015 and 2018, we know that malaria is still a, a problem in about 31 countries. And although there is a reduction in the cases, we are still on track to reduce the incidence of malaria by more by 40% or more by 2020. And lastly, in the report, it states that from 2010, we've seen a decrease in the number of deaths globally from about 585,000 to almost 405,000 deaths in 2018. So there's uh, quite a lot of information that's already there, but you might want to ask a few different types of questions if this were the area of research you were going to do. You might want to know how big is the problem in your own country. You might also want to know who are the people who are going to be involved. And you might want to understand some of the mechanisms that are, that are at play. So we'll look at this in a bit more detail on the next slide. Okay, so the types of questions you might want to ask is, firstly, how big is the problem really? I mean, do we know how big it is? Do we know what work has been done before? And can we put this in terms of numbers? Can we quantify this problem? So those are the types of questions that you could potentially ask. And there are specific types of um, research designs that we go with that. Or you might think, what I really want to know is I want to understand the problem. And maybe if I understand the problem, I should ask the correct questions, and that way I can maybe come up with a solution to the problem, or I might suggest a potential um, framework that can be followed, for example. And there's certain types of questions you can ask around that. Or you might want, want to know who are the right people that I can get involved? Who are the people that have the power to conduct the studies that might have the power to uh, conduct the interventions and what types of questions should I ask in order to get those people involved. So why don't we now look at each one of these in a bit more detail. There might be a number of descriptive questions that you would like to ask. This will be how large is the problem currently? How large will the problem be in the future, potentially? What is the increase in malaria cases that's subdivided in person, place, and time? And maybe you also want to know what proportion of individuals could benefit from health promotion or any awareness interventions. I took some of these questions and I did a search on some work that has already been done to show you when someone has asked these different types of questions, either in isolation and combination, what some of the research publications they have been in this area. We'll now take a look at a few of them. So this paper looked at the, or reported rather, on the rapid reduction of malaria following introduction of vector control interventions in the Tororo district in Uganda and it was a descriptive study. So here they had a look, or one of the questions you might want to ask is how large is the problem currently? 
and how large will the problem potentially be in the future because they've now shown that they've reduced the malaria by having different vector control interventions. Another type of study that you might want to look at is looking at the malaria program personnel or the people that are on the ground. What are some of the barriers that they have perceived? This might give you an idea how big the problem currently is, if they give you some feedback on that, and how potentially it could be in the future, but also if there are any health promotion activities, what could you do to address some of these concerns or some of these barriers? You could also have a look at some of the sustainable control um, measures or some of the questions that the University of Pretoria Institute for Sustainable Malaria Control has been asking. And one of these is, what are the transdisciplinary approaches that we need for translational applications? So what that means is we can assess how big the problem is currently. We can then project what the problem might be in future and through that way, we might need to have interdisciplinary approaches in order to come up with new and novel techniques in order to answer these questions. I'll provide a link at the end of the video where you can have a look at some of the, some of the projects that the UPI SMC at the University of Pretoria, what they have and what they are involved in. And of course, there are some other questions you can ask looking at reduction in where prevalence and increasing the awareness. You could also then look at analysis of the trends of malaria prevalence and in a type of study like this you might then classify all the cases or you might analyze the cases and divide them by person, place and time so that you could see how the trend is progressing. And lastly, when we talk about health promotion awareness interventions, you might want to think how can I reach a large proportion of the population that really are at risk. Now that you know that, or now that you have some information on describing the study, you might want to say, okay, but now I want to dig a little bit deeper. Now I want to know to what degree um, someone who's had malaria before, are they perhaps prone to have bad health later in their life? Or to what extent does their unemployment or if they are, are there any other socioeconomic factors that might contribute to the malaria burden? Or are there perhaps any control or prevention measures that have been put in place? Are they effective, yes or no? And are there any other new interventions? Have they been evaluated at individual level, at population level or community level? Some of the studies that have been done before, looking at a malaria test kit that can be used. And here you could compare and see, is the one kit more effective at um, detecting malaria or, or not? And could that potentially be used as a control measure or a, a detection measure? Rather? There's also uh, studies being done looking at what some of the um, socioeconomic factors can have in accessing the malaria control strategies because you might have a prevention strategy or control strategy put in place. It can be effective, but if certain people don't have the, um, they aren't close to some of these interventions or they don't benefit from these interventions, that could poten potentially cause a problem. There are some surveillance systems that are put into place. One of the questions you might ask is how effective is this surveillance system really and what can be done to improve this. You can also have a look at some of the um, malaria pre prevalence studies and here has been a study that's actually then projecting and seeing if this has really worked, what are the implications for elimination in the future. So the strategy has worked, how can we then take this further? Also, you can have a look at some of the studies that um, talk about reduction of the pre prevalence and increasing malaria awareness. See if they, if by increasing the one, you have a decrease in the other one. And la lastly, you might want to ask some of the prevention measures that are put into place, the, the role players that are involved. What are the lessons that they have learned and how could you potentially use these from an individual level? level and take these measures into a much larger or community level. When you, when you know that, you might say, okay, I understand how big the problem is, I know what the underlying factors are, but know what the people that are going to be involved in. And here your questions might 
might center around which organizations need to be included in these different strategies you are proposing, what organizations would support you, what organizations would oppose the initiatives, and how can some of these doubts in these initiatives be overcome. Some of the questions that you could potentially look at are some of the role players, the Malaria Program personnel, for example, some of the advisory committees from WHO, or some of the other role players in a specific country, or you can even look at changes in the WHO over a period of time, how they have been involved and what they have done has worked and what has not worked. Or you can actually have a look at some of the people that are developing the vaccines because these will be organizations that would have a vested interest in malaria prevention control and ultimately elimination and they would other support your initiatives the people who might not support these initiatives they might have they might not understand the problem completely or they might have fear that the strategies you're putting in place are perhaps not culturally sensitive and you might need to then review the strategy an easier way to overcome some of these uh, initiatives, one thing you might want to look at is having focus groups where you speak to the community that you're going to do the intervention in. If you get the um, community involved, they might be able to give you guidance. All right, so why don't we summarize? So during this presentation, we had a look at the various approaches to a research question. We had a look at questions around how big the problem really is. We had a look at questions about understanding what the problem really is and if there's any intervention strategy or any um, solution to the problem that you could propose. Also studies asking who are the role players that are involved in these types of studies, who can you then Ask to join your study or if there's any barriers who are these people that you need to speak to so again the topic that you have chosen would need to have to take into account the research approach you're going to use the method you're going to use to collect the data and how you would interpret the data therefore it is very important in order to address these th three that you need to have an appropriate research question that you wish to answer it is essential that you understand what the implications of the questions are going to be and have you asked the right types of questions to address your topic and have you included the correct group that you're going to ask to answer these questions that at the end your answer speaks to your question. So finally, your research question will determine the type of research study design that you will use. We will meet again in a few weeks time where I will share with you my own personal experience, a research question that I had asked, or they take you through the various steps, how I approached my question, what study design I used, how I collected the data, how I analyzed the data, and at the end how I answered my question and how I shared that question with the broader community via scientific publication. Thank you again for your time and thank you for listening to the short presentation. I wish you the best for the rest of this module. Thank you. Goodbye.